Green, 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 Okay, folks, just a quick fun video. A uh, bit of casting. Haven't done any casting in a while. Nothing to do with the hole. Uh, I've just got a few things I wanted to try. Um, revolving around this, my my still, my uh, you know distillation of, of stuff, whatever, whatever you want to distill. Yeah, nothing in particular. Oink, oink. Um, so I wanted to try and build a pre-cooler for the condenser and that involved yeah i was curious about casting aluminium around a copper pipe so here we've got a, a reusable mold just a bit of pipe on the outside steel pipe on the outside copper already poked down into a bit of rammable refractory at the bottom there it fits together and we're just going to pour the aluminium around the copper pipe yeah and then, you know, I got carried away and made a few more bits, but that's about it. All right, cheers. There we go, makeshift uh, alley melting pot. Um, it's just a ladle that I made out of a fire extinguisher. Uh, it's a bit rusty, we'll let it burn off for a minute. Um, tap it out, probably not touch it whilst it's got power going to it. Yeah? It is just a <laughs> oven uh, element cooker element with a uh, wound round that pot and Yeah, we got a lot of shrinkage as expected. Uh, goes about uh, 20 mil down, inch down, and uh, the aluminium bonded with the uh, not quite as cured as it could have been, or fired as it could have been, refractory. I have found this in the in the foundries where I've spilt a bit of metal, it'll uh, it'll adhere quite well. So yeah, maybe this wasn't the best idea, but Satan, sorry. Uh, that's the uh, <laughs> the e expedited. Melting pot work very nicely. Uh, it won't last very long, obviously. It's only mild still, a bit warm still, and uh, if you don't regulate the these elements, they they burn out pretty quick. So that's why when I made a nicer one, I put a, put a little PID controller on it. But you know, uh, if you've only got five minutes and you need some some melted aluminium, it's a it's a good thing to do. Uh, this time when I, before I poured the metal in, I put sand at the bottom, yeah, that might be a better way of doing things. A little bit upsetting, I cut all those fins in this and then uh, flipped it round and gripped the fins Second, I touched it with the uh, with the parting off tool. <laughs> oh well, Let's see how the others go. Okay, so I wanted to call these um, heat exchangers with a sort of six-inch computer fan. Six inch, one twenty mil, five inch. I don't know, whatever it is, a computer fan. Um, so I got a bit carried away last night and. Uh, seeing as I've got two sort of plain sections, where are they bloody well gone? Oh well, they're absent for the minute. Ah, uh, here they are. Seeing as I've got two two plain sections on the end, I thought we'd uh, we'd clamp them with something, and you know we'll get a bit of heat transfer through that anyway with the clamp. We get decent contact, um, so the box might as well 
be involved in the cooling as well. So they should uh, should both sit in in the box. I don't know. I mean, uh, lost lost frames kind of handy for this sort of thing, isn't it? I really I should have tried lost framing the, uh, the heat exchangers, but I think until I get uh, vacuum on my uh, on my casting set up that won't end too well will it thin stuff like that I've got some really thin foam I have got some vacuum pumps let me just show these vacuum pumps pretty quickly because they're pretty cool okay in the uh, TCME storerooms at the minute uh, I'm sure some of you will know what they are they're old milking pumps yeah uh, <laughs> you pick them up really cheap like vacuum pumps uh, Pretty expensive things, but uh, yeah, no one, no one seems to have found any sensible uses for these old milking pumps. So these are, you know, sort of uh, ranging from a fiver to fifteen quid each. Like this one, bit of a beast. Uh, I think they're all vein pumps. Yeah, oh, loads of weird shit in here. Little lathe, tiny little lathe. There's a whole uh, shelf full of old car jacks. <laughs> Someone gave me down at the bottom. Yeah. And I got all these weird shapes. I just found them in the shed the other day. Um, I got them ages ago. Just going to turn them into metal for the kids so they've got something different to throw at each other you know uh, so we'll do them at the same time we just had a, a beautiful light display as the as the element failed so this one is this one has done two pours from cold and this would have been the third but you know that's what i'm saying if you don't regulate these elements they burn out pretty smartish don't they but the uh Element burnt out, bit of arcing and flashing. Oh, look what it did to the ceramic. Woo! <laughs> it's uh, easy for you to get how much, uh, how much that 13 amps. They haven't blown the fuse, so you know, this is under 13 amps at 240. Okay, <laughs> so there's an especially large mess behind me. Um, I got carried away. Then I the problem is we lost foam. Like whilst you're waiting for the metal to heat up or whatever, like you'll, you'll get making more bits that you remember you want. Um, we got some uh, some nice aluminium bears. <laughs> I didn't want them. Uh, the uh, the foundry burnt out a couple of times. I had to rewrap it gonna get screwed on the front there. I haven't got fittings for the for the copper pipe yet so I can't uh, solder these together so I don't want to file away too much at the back. Um, that's what it's gonna look like. The <laughs> a lot of fun, a lot of fun with the lost phone casting you know because you can just you can just think of something and then make it uh, it doesn't take a huge amount of effort or time. Um, yeah, I need some some elbows to go plumbing shop and uh, a couple of um, oof, what are we on? Got me quarter BSP fittings that I can solder on there to go onto the steel itself. Uh, and that that will come off. The Cast, cast aluminium never machines well yeah. and there are lots of things you can do but normally all your choices as far as improving the, the machine ability of cast aluminium rely on knowing what alloy you're working with in the first place so that you can heat treat it or, or do whatever else
Oh no. Well, there's a bit of luck. Didn't think these would turn out because obviously I saw the hollow happening in top. But uh, my shelf brackets are a little bit of a void there. But they're <laughs> perfectly serviceable workshop shelf brackets, aren't they? Hey? <laughs> All right then, folks. That just about wraps up today's casting fun. Look, some, some little bits and bobs. I don't know if I'll, I'll let the kids have this one. I might, I might make a ridiculously uh, oversized necklace for the missus or something. Um, they can have these. I'm sure they'll enjoy doing something with that. And what this lovely, uh, lovely heat exchange, I guess. Pre condenser. Precondenser, heat eliminator, heat eliminator. All right, it's nice making things that are meant to fit together, isn't it? There's only thrown together. Oh, I've got so many, <laughs> so many ideas for heat exchangers that I can make in my shed. I've got some uh, some stain, really thin stainless steel sheet, 0.1 mil stainless steel sheet. I want to try and spot weld that together um, form it up and spot weld it that might be quite fun uh, what yeah and me my shelf brackets oh there we go already in use just got to get these uh, odds and sods boxes off the floor um, uh, nothing to do with the steel what yeah hope you enjoyed that We'll get back on with the important stuff now, but uh, what, well, you know, <laughs> consider it a little whole holiday. Yeah, alright, I'll catch you all later. Cheerio folks, bye bye.